Hi everyone, welcome to your guys' video about what you are currently improving on and becoming better at, okay? So you went ahead and chose the card that says Venus and Virgo, discrimination number six. And then I just pulled a tarot card for you and we got the King of Water, which is the King of Cups, all right? So what I'm seeing so far, and I just wanna say as a disclaimer, this is the second time that I'm trying to record your pile which really makes sense with the message that I was feeling for you earlier, which is not being so critical, analytical, and hard on yourself as well as other people. So the biggest thing that I'm really hearing for you, Pile One, is the sense of being able to forgive yourself, being able to forg forgive other people, and knowing that it's okay to make mistakes in life. So I don't know if you have Venus in Virgo, or maybe you have a lot of Virgo placements, maybe you have a six house stelium like I do, but maybe you strive for things to be orderly. Maybe you want things done a certain way. Maybe you want to present yourself to be perfect or um, maybe detail oriented, someone that's seen as useful or perfectionistic tendencies, right? And it might not be you have this when it comes to other people, but possibly, right? But I'm seeing the bit, biggest critic that you have is yourself. And I'm hearing that you are really working on being seen as more compassionate to not just yourself, but other people, having empathy, feeling like it's okay for you to make mistakes, being emotionally open and receptive to other people. Um, but just having a safe space, right? So I feel like what you're going to be working on is broadening your horizons when it comes to the people that you hang out with, your romantic situations. It could even be just how you are with yourself, like how you talk to yourself, how you give love to yourself. So your self-love is going to be something that you're really wanting to work on is being more open to your yourself, being more forgiving, being seen as someone that wants to, you know, embrace the ugly and the good, not just the good parts of you, but also the uglier aspects. So you may be doing a lot of shadow work right now when it comes to how you view your physical beauty, when it comes to being more in that childlike, I guess you're what am I trying to say? Your inner child. Maybe you want to heal your inner child through watching movies that you used to love as a kid or getting back into hobbies or art projects or doing the things that you used to do as a kid and not feeling dumb or stupid for liking the things that you like. So I'm getting that you may, sorry you guys, you may feel like you're judging yourself too much. Like you feel dumb for enjoying the people that you like or you feel dumb for enjoying maybe a fandom when it comes to a certain movie genre or lore or TV shows, right? People would be like, that's dumb. Why do you like that? And you're recognizing like, but I like it, right? And I don't care if people judge me for it. Like this is something that I enjoy. Um, so that may be something that you're just really learning to be embracing of is I don't care if people judge me for the things that I like or the way that I am. I like myself. So you're really learning self-love, but I'm also hearing that you're also wanting to learn how to be less judgmental of other people, not making people feel icky or sad or bad for being who they are or for making the mistakes because we are, we are all human, pile one, and we are living a very human experience and we all make mistakes, but that's a part of life. We need to make mistakes so that we can learn and grow from it. And I think you have a really hard time with allowing yourself to make mistakes, but you have a really high, I guess, I guess it's like morals, like your moral code or value for what you want in life, but you kind of expect the same that you would expect of yourself 
and other people. And I think you are recognizing that everyone is different. Everyone's life trajectory is a very different story, right? We all do things very differently. We all have different expectations. We all see success or happiness very differently. So for you, you may be seeing your, your life as I want to settle down. I want to have kids. I want to get married at this age. But maybe your friend is like, I don't want to get married. I don't want to have kids. I want to just travel the world, right? So you guys have very different viewpoints on life and you have very different lifestyles, but you, you are respecting of your loved ones to do things differently. You're not trying to micromanage. You're not trying to control the situation. You're just allowing your loved ones and people around you to be who you are or be who they are. And you're allowing yourself to be who you are. I think you're really wanting to just embrace your individuality, but you also want to allow others to have the same for themselves, okay? So I am seeing that for you. That is something that you were really wanting to work on. But another thing that I'm seeing that you're working on is being more free, freedom of expression, uh, feeling like you're not a slave to society. Um, not allowing discrimination or the feeling of discrimination to hold you hostage in your life. Because I think you do have this sense of, I need to be seen in a certain way. I need to be seen as respectable. I need to be seen as I have my shit together, right? And that's just not... That's not something that we can have or uphold all the time. Again, you need to be able to let loose. And I think you're learning that it's okay to let loose. It's okay to do things differently. It's okay to get off schedule. It's okay if you make mistakes or you slip up. It's fine. That's what makes you human. But also, we need to learn from our mistakes as well. Like, just because you had an off day doesn't mean that that's the end of the world, that you're always going to have an off day. So I think you're really learning how to not be so hypercritical of yourself, not beating yourself up for doing things a different way than what you expect yourself to. And I also want to say another thing that I'm seeing that you're working on, Pal One. You're really wanting to be more open with your time, your energy, and your space. Because my husband has a Virgo uh, Venus, um, and I love this aspect about himself because he is very, very nurturing. He's very, he has an eye for detail when it comes to things that he values and likes, right? So when he is in love with someone, he's very nurturing, he's very caring, and he is very detail-oriented, but his love language is acts of service. But he does have the issue of only allowing the people that he really cares about the most to see those attributes about himself. He doesn't want to just give his time, energy, or love to anyone, which I think that is good too. You need to have boundaries. But I think what you're working on is you're not going to be so, I guess, cold. I'm hearing as cold as ice. So you may be coming off to people that you see as not worthy of your time of, or energy, um, you give them the cold shoulder or you're not really open with them or you just kind of like ghost them or don't give them the time of day. There's something about how people that you may, I feel bad, you may judge people based on first impressions or based on their character of what people are saying about them. And I, I feel really bad for saying this, but I'm, this is what I'm hearing. You're really wanting to work on not doing that not listening to gossip or not just judging people based on first time encounters, but actually giving that person the benefit of the doubt, not shutting them out um, emotionally because you get a weird vibe or again, listen to your intuition, right? Uh, there's certain people where if you do get like an intuitive hit, then yeah, listen to that. But I think what is going on is you have a sense of rules for yourself or a code of conduct or whatever when it comes to what you expect in people or what you want in your life. And sometimes our judgment can be clouded based on the set of rules and someone that would be actually a really great partner for you or someone that would be a really great friend you don't really give them the chance because again they're not hitting that criteria that you have set for yourself so i think you're really wanting to give people more chance more chances you're wanting to be more open with people you're wanting to give people yeah, again, the benefit of the doubt, right? You want to be more open to people and seeing what they have to say and not just assuming things uh, before they even have a chance to express to you 
what they're thinking or who they are as a person or whatever the context of the situation is. I'm really seeing that for you. But again, you're working on not being so picky when it comes to love also. That's another thing that I'm seeing that you're working on. You may be wanting to go on dates with people that you usually would, you know, not care about. You're wanting to branch out and maybe talk to people that are not in your usual social circles or they're not your usual type. Like I'm seeing this as you wanting to be seen as more versatile, more open, more lighthearted energy and someone that's open to change. That's something that you're really wanting to discover about you and yourself and other people is what else is out there, right? All right, so pile one, that's what I was channeling with your cards so far. I'm just going to start pulling some more cards to see how else, okay, <laughs> how else you're improving. And a card fell on the floor, so this one wanted to come out. Conclusions are within reach. All righty. How you are improving is you are about to receive some sort of recognition or acknowledgement. I'm channeling that for you. There is something that you're diligently working hard on. And I think this is one of the things that you have been really critical about is this thing that you are working hard on. And I'm kind of getting this is something regarding your career, how you make your money or something that's seen publicly. Let me see. Let me use my dice actually to see what this is because I'm hearing something about how you're about to receive some sort of recognition, respect, authority, or accomplishment based on something that maybe you're really trying to like broaden your horizons with. Like again, it's kind of making me think that you had to really do something outside of the box to pursue this. This is something that you usually wouldn't see as your typical behavior. This is not part of your character. This isn't something that you would do normally, but you went and did it anyway. And it's something that you've been really critical about. What is this? Yeah, Pluto and we got the seventh house. So you made a really big change when it came to your sense of Wow, I'm hearing wealth. I'm not going to say that because the seventh house is all about like relationships and contracts and commitments. Um, I'm hearing wealth though. So I'm hearing that you made a change when it came to completely redoing something or completely starting fresh. This is something that was very, very, very risky for you. Something that you saw as like... This is like way out of your comfort zone because when I see Pluto, this is like completely redoing something, cutting something off, no second chances. Like you had to do something really extreme, okay? So this was a very extreme thing that you had to do to get whatever recognition or respect or change that this is about to bring for you. And it could be relating to, oops, it could be relating to the relationships that you have in your life. It could be relating to marriages, contracts, business contracts, but this is all about commitments, right? So you made a change to your commitment. You may have ended a commitment. You may have had to walk away from something to be able to pursue whatever this is, but I'm seeing a transformation where you made a very extreme change so that you could have a new beginning for yourself. And I'm seeing that very, very soon, you're going to be having that little seed that's been planted. It's going to start blooming. And I want to get some more details on that because I feel like this is going to be a new chapter in your life. Um, pile one. There's a new chapter in your life because you ended something, because you cut something out, because you were extreme when it came to something that you want to do. And I feel like you're very careful. You're very tactful. You're not someone that makes very risky choices for yourself. But with this, whatever this was, you, you took a risk on yourself. Yeah, we got courage here. You were brave. You decided to be brave with something. You decided to believe in your gut when it came to a person, when it came to something that you want long term in your life. And you decided to end something. You decided to walk away from something or you decided to start over, like redo something completely. Look at the bottom of the deck, you guys. We've got transformation. Yeah, you are literally having a transformation. You're having some sort of goal that's going to be met because you redid something. You completely 
just obliviated it. You you want to be able to have a brand new beginning and that's coming for you because you believed in yourself or you stepped outside of the box on something. You're doing something that's not typically done that you would do for yourself or maybe this is a very taboo thing in general. Um, this may even be seen as rebellious or careless is what I'm hearing. Maybe seen as something that's careless. People may have judged you for this ostracized you yeah i'm hearing something about how wow as i was gonna say that i just looked at the bottom of this deck and look what this says knowing your own darkness is the best method for dealing with the darkness of other people you are recognizing that you have some shadow sides to you that you are really wanting to shine a light on Whatever this thing is that you decided to pursue was something that you may have been feeling a lot of shame for. You may have been feeling guilt for it. You may have felt like, I can't do this because the world is going to judge me. I can't do this because, again, I don't want to be ostracized in society, in my family, by my friend group. So whatever this was, you decided to completely redo or walk away because you chose yourself. And whatever that is, is going to be bringing you a sense of accomplishment. It's going to be respected by other people. I'm hearing that this could actually be a relationship change or this has something to do with your money um, or both. Maybe you made changes to both of those things. But the thing that you are working on is being able to be bold enough to be you, to not feel bad about liking the things that you like about pursuing your goals, about being around the people that make you feel seen, loved, and heard. So again, this is all about you contradicting society or traditions or other people's personal beliefs and just being yourself and being authentic and not allowing people to shame you for it. Um, that's what I'm really channeling for you. So you are embracing your darker aspects of yourself. You're embracing the uglier stuff about you that maybe people have made you feel bad about. Um, you're learning to just love you, embrace you for your good and your bad aspects. And I think one of the conclusions, I just dropped a card again. Um, I think one of the conclusions that you are going to be getting is you're going to be getting answers as to why did that relationship end? Why did I feel called to walk away from something that I made a commitment to? Why did I decide to, you know, change my career overnight? Like, I think you went after something, you made a change without even really knowing why you did it, but you felt called to it, which is not something that you typically do, Pile One, because I feel like you're someone that goes by the rules, you go by the books, um, you you basically make decisions based on facts and what's been done before and what works. But whatever this was, was something that your intuition was calling you towards. And it's something that you wouldn't normally do, but it was just a really strong feeling. And so you did it. And whatever that is, is going to be showing you that you made the right choice, right? The other card that I did pull for you that you are currently working on is defensiveness. So hearing other people's perspectives and feelings, shift your focus to them. It's not always about you. So again, it's funny that I was talking about how you need to be able to, you know, live your truth and focus on your truth. But I think the other thing, again, discrimination, making people feel bad or feel like they're being judged. I think you are also learning that it's okay, again, to make mistakes, but also being able to allow others to make mistakes. That's, that's like the biggest thing that I'm really hearing for you. And it's funny because we have this uh, Pluto with the seventh house. I'm just going to say what I'm hearing for you. You may have made a decision to walk away from someone recently without getting all the facts. Um, I don't know why I'm channeling that for you. I feel like the thing that we're, we were talking about earlier, there's two separate things here. There's a choice that you decided to do with your money. That's what I was really getting for this. But this other thing that I'm hearing for you is you may have a habit of um, wanting to ghost people, wanting to cut off contact if they are 
you know, making you upset or you want to walk away or emotionally ghost your problems, especially when it comes to other people. Like if they give you the ick, you're done. I think what you're learning is this is a tactic of yours that you use as a way to protect yourself from getting hurt or from disappointment later down the road. And I'm hearing that you don't really give the, the person the benefit of the doubt. You don't allow that person to have space to be able to defend themselves or explain why. You kind of just jump to conclusions and you're like, okay, peace, I'm out. Um, I got my answer. But I think what you're learning to do is, again, <laughs> not letting your pettiness or your bitterness or your anger hold you back from, you know, allowing an apology to come through or, you know, not allowing that person to say their piece or just emotionally cutting that person off cold turkey. I think you're learning that there's going to be times where it's okay for you to do that if they're really hurting you, but I think it's almost like a learned tactic where you're treating everyone like that now because you don't want to get hurt. And I think that's something that you're working on is not going straight to fight mode or straight to, I need to put my barriers and walls up because they're going to hurt me mode, right? So that's something that you're really working on is just allowing your softness and your vulnerability to come through. It's okay for you to show weakness. It's okay for you to you know, show people that you are hurt or that this person made you upset. Um, but there needs to be communication. There needs to be a conversation. You can't just cut people out or ghost them because you don't want to deal with it, right? So that is something that you are currently working on is that, okay? So let's pull a couple more cards before I end this reading for you. Pile one. Let's see here. What are you working on? Self-care, tend to your garden. So yeah, I really think that you are really wanting to work on self-care and self-care can be seen as so many different things. We also have beginnings here, right? Don't be afraid to start small. So you're starting up something new when it comes to your self-care. Let's see what that is. Self-care in what aspect? Fourth house and Mercury. So self-care is all about how you communicate to yourself, right? The fourth house is making me think of your... I guess like how you grew up, again, your traditions, this also can talk about your comfort zone. So maybe learning how to make yourself feel more comfortable, more safe. Maybe you have outgrown certain thought patterns or certain traditions or belief systems that you were brought up by, by your family and you're wanting to, you know, discover something new. This is making me think that you are almost being seen as a plant in a pot where your roots are outgrowing the pot and you don't want to get root rot, right? So you have to be able to move that plant into a bigger pot with new soil. You want to be able to have like a brand new perspective. So self-care for you is again, tending to your garden. You have outgrown your situation. You have outgrown your perspective. You have outgrown maybe even your living situation. So what you're working on is being feeling safe enough to know that it's okay to move on it's okay to branch out it's okay to try new things maybe you're really wanting to you know talk to new people um you're wanting new experiences in your life you want a new living situation you may be discovering that the things that made you feel comfortable or safe or loved or even felt pretty right so making me think of anything that made you feel pretty or anything that made you feel safe you're recognizing these things aren't really helping me anymore. So an example, maybe when you were stressed, you would go straight to, you know, smoking weed, right? Maybe that helped you with your anxiety and you're recognizing now that's not a great crutch for me to have or it's actually not even working anymore. So maybe you're looking into more herbal, like, I guess weed is herbal, right? It's a plant, but maybe you're wanting to be more health conscious and you're recognizing that maybe this isn't the best for your psyche or it's not the best for your immune system. So you're looking for more, even more natural ways or more healthier ways to deal with your stress. Or maybe you're recognizing that your living situation 
you feel like you've outgrown it, you feel like you need something that's different, a change of space. So maybe you may be looking at new places to live. Maybe you're going to be recognizing that your work environment needs to change. Like I'm seeing this as you've outgrown something, your environment, your thought process, anything. You may even be recognizing that the way that you used to talk to yourself hasn't been the healthiest either. Um, so I just, I'm seeing that you're ready for a shakeup in your life. Anything that you see as self-care that would make you feel good, make you feel safe, make you feel nurtured. You want to change something up. You want to spice something up. So that's something that you're going to be working on is being open to change, being open to recognize that it's okay to change. It's okay to be wanting something new for yourself. If that's how you're feeling, let's get one last card for you. Pile one on how you are improving or becoming better. And we got be open to new experiences. Yeah, your spirit guides are really wanting to call to you that it's okay to be wanting something different for yourself. And I'm getting for you that you may be wanting to be more open when it comes to meeting new people, right? Like I'm seeing this as you are excited and you're excited to like have new experiences, but you're not really sure how to do that. I'm hearing that you're, you're wanting something new, but you're like, how do I do this? Like, what, what do I do to get started? Um, I think what you need to do to get started on having these new experiences is not saying no so much. And what I mean by that is I'm hearing that your spirit guides are going to be sending people in to maybe even invite you to go do things or maybe you're going to be like seeing certain things on tv or you're going to be getting recommendations for products or places or experiences and i think the things that you would usually say no to you're going to learn to start saying yes to and just see what happens so that's something that you're going to be learning how to do is not having your boundaries so tall not having them so strong to the point where you're not allowing yourself to kind of just like see what happens, right? So you're going to be open to new experiences by just allowing things to be, just going with the flow, just seeing what happens, like not having an expectation on it, just being able to, you know, follow your intuition and your gut and just go with it, right? Being more risky in life. But that is about it, pile one. Oh, I'm sorry. One last card that I uh, pulled off the top of my tarot deck was the Empress card. So again, it says lavish abundance, give birth to your dreams, nurture yourself and others. So this is like literally all the queens in one, but I feel like you're going to be having a glow up when it comes to your physical appearance. That's something that you're really working on is really devoting your time to being seen as what makes you feel beautiful, what makes you feel valuable. But I'm also seeing that you are ready for new experiences in your life. The Empress is all about creation. So you're really ready to create something new in your life. You're really ready to step into this new role in your life. You're wanting a new chapter. And that's something that you're really actually manifesting as a new chapter when it comes to, you know, passion when it comes to an adventure, you want excitement, you want to feel like you want to feel like there's more to life than just your 9 to 5 everyday daily grind routines as well as work. You want something more than just work. You want to be able to have fun in your life again and adventure and excitement and that is something that you're manifesting because you're being more open and receptive, right? So Pile one, that is all that I have for you. I really hope that you enjoyed this reading and that this was helpful. And I will see all of you guys in the next one. Bye. Pile two, so you went ahead and chose the card that has Mars in Libra, the seventh house choice. This is going to be your reading all about how you are improving, what are you becoming better at, what's leveling up, or how are you leveling up in your life. And... <laughs> straight away I already got the, the message just on your card okay and I clarified it with the seven of fire which is the seven of wands and tarot you are having a better respect for yourself when it comes to other people okay so this this could be like not just love either but just people in general you didn't have any boundaries when it came to knowing what your self-worth was and your self-respect was to other people. I'm also hearing that you may have attracted a lot of players in your love life, like people that 
you know, just wanted to use you for your body, for sex, um, non-committal energy. And this could be friends too, but people that just wanted to use you for things, maybe took advantage of your kindness. I'm seeing that you're really working on having better boundaries with people, being able to voice your opinion with other people, knowing that if someone is mistreating you or making you feel bad or treating you like a second option or someone that isn't the prize, you're going to be, again, standing up for yourself. You're going to be taking yourself out of that situation, not allowing yourself to get hurt. I feel like you're a hopeless romantic pal too, or if this is not love related, I'm just seeing that you are someone that's like a true ride or die friend. You are, you're like always at the beck and call for other people. So you're there for people to make sure that they're doing okay. Um, how you take action or what drives you in life is being seen as a good partner, a good friend, um, someone that will be there for you, right? But I'm hearing that you don't, you don't do the same for yourself. Like you need to make sure that you're taking care of you, right? That you are your own best friend, that you are your own best lover, right? Um, and so what may have driven you in the past is you were really love focused or relationship focused. You're really focused on, you know, settling down or having a boyfriend or a girlfriend or having a, a friend or even just a person in general that you could be around all the time or having someone that would be there for you. Um, emotionally or mentally, it's like you couldn't just be by yourself or maybe you didn't feel secure enough or yeah, there's something about, yeah, I'm hearing something now about how you may have been seen or maybe you saw yourself as someone that wasn't strong enough to be alone. You may have been afraid to be by yourself. Um, I'm hearing strength and numbers. You felt like you needed other people to give you the strength that you needed to have the backbone, the backbone that you needed to be able to make the choices that you needed to make in life. Like you needed someone to like hold your hand through you, your experiences in life. Like it may have even been very codependent, right? So you may have had a very codependent, uh, maybe even like a parent, right? Maybe you had a parent relationship where you felt like you needed to have your parent to help you out with things. Um, you couldn't make adult decisions without a parent to be there to make sure that you did it right. Or maybe you needed to have a partner or be in a romantic relationship because you didn't know if you could just be alone, right? And I feel bad for calling you out because like a lot of the readings that I do, I just want to say this right now. Most of the messages and the readings that I do, I get triggered by, okay? Because I call myself out calling you out. I feel like we are all connected, pile two. We are all mirrors of each other. And a lot of the messages that I give you, I'm like, fuck, I gotta work on myself. <laughs> like, I'm like, I recognize in myself that the messages that I give you, I need to hear as well, okay? So I need you to know that I'm not like holier than thou. I'm not telling people what's right or what's wrong with them. Like, I have issues. I have a lot of problems. I, I do. I recognize this in myself that I need to work on myself. And so I need you to know that I'm not just trying to like make you feel bad or point out all your flaws or things that are wrong with you. Like I also have problems and your problems are most likely my problems as well. We're all going through this together. I just, I need to reassure that, that <laughs> I'm not perfect. Okay. And like, I'm also, I'm, again, this message is really resonating with me, okay? This, I feel like this would be my pile pile too because I have been very codependent in the past. I'm really trying to work on it. I have an anxious attachment style when it comes to love and partnership that I'm working through. And I myself have felt like I could not be by myself, that I didn't feel strong enough to make choices, that I needed a, hold, a helping hand, which is why I feel like I'm able to relate to this pile and why I'm telling you what you need to do about it because I recognize that I also have this issue, right? But pile two, what I'm seeing for you, back to your message, you are working on making sure that you are your first priority you are teaching yourself the value of your independence and you are recognizing your strength. I think you're recognizing that you were strong enough to be your own person all along, that it's okay 
to assert yourself that it's okay to say what's on your mind even if people do not like or agree with what you have to say because again mars is all about what drives you what is your passion how do you assert yourself how do you put yourself out there and with that libra mars and libra you could have this placement you may be very people focused. You want balance, right? You want things to be fair. You want people to just get along, but also you want to make sure that everyone else is in the room is being taken care of, but who's taking care of you, right? Are you making yourself feel held, feel comfortable? Why are you making yourself uncomfortable to make everyone else comfortable? Again, look at this, the board on the feet. It's almost like you're causing yourself pain so that everyone else can be okay. And I think you're recognizing that you do not want to be like that anymore. Um, so you're going to be, maybe you're learning to be more communicative. You're learning to stand up for yourself when people are testing you or overstepping your boundaries or they're saying things that are hurting your feelings. You're not going to be quiet. You're actually going to be like saying, hey, like, I don't like that. Like you are upsetting me. You're hurting my feelings. And this is why. So I'm seeing a, the biggest thing is you're going to be very expressive with what works or what, what doesn't work for you. You're going to be very expressive with people when it comes to your boundaries, the things that you value, and also how you want people to treat you. So that is definitely something that I'm really picking up for you, pal, too. So let's go ahead and just pull some more cards and see what else i'm hearing assertive in my mind so again maybe you are working on being more assertive right um but let's go ahead and see what else you are improving or working on right now pile two so we got career so that is a big thing here you are working on your long-term stability. So I'm really channeling that you are the type of person that I feel like you've always been working. I'm hearing that you've been working like since you were younger, like at a really young age, but I'm hearing that you haven't really had a plan for what your 10 year goal is, right? I, I think you know that you need to make money or you've always been focused on making your money. You've always been very Focus and concentrated on having money. You like to have money. You like the nicer things in life, but I don't think you really knew what to do to like really sustain your finances to keep having long term wealth. And I'm seeing that what you're really focusing right on right now is you want to focus on your dream career. You want to pursue the thing that would be making you feel the most fulfilled emotionally, but also you want to make sure that what you're chasing, right? What you're going after is going to be bringing you long-term success. You want to have something where you can actually depend on this to keep making you money or to have that financial security that you're longing for, which is maybe why you have struggled in the past with being codependent with other people because maybe you felt like you weren't able to provide for yourself or you didn't have the means to, you know, keep continually, again, having that financial security that you're craving. There's something about how you felt like you needed to live with roommates or maybe you needed to have a partner or maybe your parents were financially supporting you for a while because you felt like you didn't really know how to do that. I'm, I'm just getting kind of getting for you, pile two, that you felt like, I feel like you've always wanted to be sufficient, but there's like this sense of like, I don't know how to do it. And I think what you're learning to do is you're just really trying to be more assertive, being uncomfortable, just trying things out but also diligent when it comes to your work ethic. I think you're really learning how to have a better workflow. Your sense of um, responsibility is also something that you're working really hard on. So there is a dream career or a goal that you have right now that is teaching you the power of responsibility. It's teaching you how to be maybe even your own boss. Because I'm really getting this as entrepreneur energy here. Or maybe you want to be an entrepreneur and so you're really focused on that right now but you have really big goals when it comes to your future and maybe that's something that you've never really had before or maybe this is something that you didn't have the the balls or the guts to go after is this dream of going bigger I think in life pile two you've kept yourself pretty small or really limited because you didn't think that you were strong enough or you didn't think you had what it takes to be successful on your own or to assert yourself the way that you've dreamed to. And I think it's affected many areas of your life, not just your career, not just your relationships, but many aspects. 
you're, or maybe you've been insecure, maybe you are very anxious, right? Or maybe you just didn't believe in yourself, but that has stunted you almost in life to the point where you're afraid to take chances on yourself, you're afraid to assert yourself, you're afraid to try new things. Or even the, the dreams that you've had growing up of what you want your life to be like. You thought you weren't good enough to have that. It's like a limited mindset. And that has stunted you in your growth. And I think you are learning and recognizing like, I am the creator of my life, right? Every, like, I might not get the results that I want right away, but every step, every decision that I make is like a domino effect. Over time, I will become better. I will become more braver. I will become stronger. I will get better over time, but I gotta try sometime. I gotta start somewhere. So you almost feel like a novice in life, but you're you're recognizing that if you want the things that you want, you gotta actually put yourself out there and try it. Like, for example, you could be someone, this is just an example. I can't really think of anything else, but you're like, I want to win the lottery, but then you never even buy a lottery ticket, right? You just kind of dream about having all this money or dreaming about having this like crazy life, but you never actually assert yourself. Like me being on YouTube, I never thought that I was even likable enough or intelligent enough or capable enough to be able to assert myself and put myself on a very public platform. Oops and uh, show myself off and be like, hey, this is me, right? I felt very insecure, but I also felt like there wasn't really any value to me. And I know it's horrible me saying that, but I really thought that for a long time where I didn't think I had at all what it takes to be online or do what I'm doing right now. Um, but I just decided to make a choice for myself. And again, making a choice for yourself. And I'm here now, and again, I'm nowhere near where everyone else is that does what I do. I only have like, again, I'm really grateful for the subscribers that I have, but I'm just, I'm nowhere near like reputable or a big name, but I'm still proud of myself for getting to where I'm at right now because I have gotten better as time continues. And I know I'm going to keep getting better at what I'm doing. And that's the same with you, pal, too. You're going to keep getting better, but you got to start and initiate it right? We all got to start from the beginning. We all got to make mistakes. But over time, you'll learn the ropes. You'll become more comfortable with what you're doing to the point where you won't need someone to help you out or you won't feel uncomfortable doing it because you're going to get used to it and you're going to actually be feeling more bold enough to, you know, try something else, try something different. Um, again, keep expanding, keep growing. That's what life is all about. But what I'm really seeing for you is you have really big dreams when it comes to your long-term career and money. And what you're working on is really, you're really focusing on your future and knowing that anything is possible if you choose to take action on it. Um, so I feel like what you're really wanting to initiate is some sort of dream job, uh, some sort of dream career, really making really big, risky money moves, possibly, if that's something that you are thinking about, if it's not your career, but your, your money and your, uh, your assets, your property, you're learning to be more assertive and you're wanting to learn how to be bold enough to make those choices that in your mind, you would tell yourself no. I did drop some cards on the floors, so hold on, pile two. Let me go ahead and pick those up. Um, yeah, anyway, so let's go ahead and pull some more cards from for you and see what else you are currently improving and working on. How are you becoming better? Pile two. So we got inconsistent. Think about if your thoughts, actions, and routines are inconsistent. Does it serve you well on a daily basis? Let me go ahead and pull another card for you. This is really, it's just kind of clarifying everything I was saying so far. Okay, that's wait. I'm just dropping all my cards today. What is going on? Hold on, pal, too. All right. I'm kind of getting like anxious energy from your pile. Okay, so we got move and we got play here. Among the grass and the wild violets lie undisturbed little secrets to uncover. Oh, that's cool. 
And then we got Move, A Rolling Stone Gathers No Moss. So again, there's this inconsistency of wanting to try new things, but then you kind of like table it. Um, I'm getting that you have a lot of ideas, you have a lot of thoughts that you do not take action on. That's like the biggest thing that I'm really channeling for you. Or if you do start something up, you may like self-talk and you may tell yourself like, oh, I'm not good enough to do this. And so you stop what you're doing. Like it's like starting up and stopping, starting up and stopping. So again, you're not consistent enough with something. Um, and it could be because maybe there's a lack of faith or maybe you are thinking that it's not going to go anywhere. I'm just, I'm kind of getting that there's this sense of in your life, you haven't had commitment or stability. Um, things have kind of felt shaky for you. And I think that whatever this career is, because I feel like the career is like the biggest thing that you're focusing on right now, pal, to. I think whatever this is, if, you've, if you're already pursuing this, because this is something that you're improving on right now. I think this career or this dream or this goal that you have is probably the most consistency that you've ever had in your life. It's the most stable thing that you've had. Um, it's something that you haven't given yourself up on. So I think what you're learning to do is not giving up on yourself when you're putting so much effort into it. There is this TikTok uh, meme that's been going around and I'm trying to remember. It's like, all that work and what has it given me? Why did I do it? <laughs> Sorry, I know I don't know if that's exactly what the lyrics are, but it's like all this work, right? You feel like all the work that you've been putting into things in the past, this is the past you, all the work and all the time, all the energy, you like dedicate yourself to it and then it's not giving you the, the rewards or the recognition or the affirmation of what you're wanting and so you give up on it because it's not right then right now but this career or this goal or whatever this is that you're focusing on right now pile two it's something that you've been really putting a lot of time and energy into and it's not giving you what you want but there's something about it that's making you believe in yourself to keep pushing anyway and whatever this is is something that again this is the most consistent you've ever been with something this is something that you're continually trying to work on. And I feel like it's this career because I think, again, you're, you're choosing yourself for the first time, your, your goals, yourself, you, I think you're really wanting to choose yourself and choosing yourself is having the life that you desire. And whatever this is that you're working towards is something that you truly believe in, even if you're not seeing the physical response to it yet. I did drop another card. I've been dropping so many cards with your pile. I, I think there's been a lot of things. Yeah, Persevere is the card that I just dropped. Leave no stone unturned. I'm telling you, I think you're really recognizing that for the rewards that you want, the things that you're desiring, you need to keep working. Even if you're not seeing the progress right away. Because there's something that you're working really hard towards right now. Or there's something that you're thinking about working on. And your spirit guides are saying that there's going to be a lot of things that may try to trip you up. Um, may try to get in your way. But whatever this is, I'm really hearing this for you. This is like a money pot for you. I don't know why I'm hearing that. Whatever this is, is going to be bringing you the success that you're craving. The financial freedom that you're craving. The independence that you're craving. There's going to be a lot of like, like test to your commitment though, but I'm seeing that it's going to be leading you to what you want. Um, and so I'm seeing that you need to keep continually moving and working and progressing on it, no matter how hard things get. So what you're learning and what you're working on is not letting your doubt, not letting your fears and not letting things that are not changing in front of you to make you stop everything that you're doing right to keep holding you back in life again I, I feel like you are you're almost like the teacher the student that's becoming the teacher you're learning but you're going to become masterful at it if you keep working at it and i really feel like this has to do with your career but just to kind of clarify let's see what else this could be talking about that your spirit guides are saying that you're becoming more consistent with second house and jupiter yeah i'm telling you I'm telling you, your second, the second house is all about your possessions, what you value, your financial security, but also your talents, right? And again, Jupiter makes me think of talent and good luck. There's a lot of good luck and fortune and movement and success 
with something that you have a goal on. Again, your money, your valuables, um, a talent that you may be working on right now. Lots of blessings with this, lots of success. They want you to keep working at this. Whatever money goals, whatever career goals, or whatever you know, talents that you're working on, things that you feel good about, your self-worth is also something that I'm seeing. This is something that you need to keep continually working on because I'm seeing that this is going to be what you see as your blessing in life. Um, I'm seeing that for you. All right, so to end your reading off pile two, I'm going to pull another card and see what else are you working on or improving on right now. I'm hearing love life. So again, your love life is wanting to come back up as a topic. I'm channeling that right now. Okay, two cards. God, I'm just keep dropping all your cards today. All right. <laughs> so let's see. Embrace your inner and outer beautiful qualities. And there's a peacock here. And then the other card that I got for you is listen to your intuitive signals. They are real and it will guide you in the right direction. So another message that I'm channeling for you is knowing your worth. You are learning to embrace your beauty, your differences, and your quirks, okay? When I see, I'm hearing flashy, so you are recognizing that you are beautiful the way you are. You're recognizing that you are special. That you may be different from other people. I'm getting that you may have been insecure to, you know, show yourself off, or maybe you felt like your partners were judging you, or maybe you were always trying to get, like, like words of affirmation from your partners to make sure that they liked you or thought that you were attractive and blah, blah, blah. I think you're turning inward and you're learning to validate yourself and you're learning to recognize your own beauty and you don't need other people to do that for you. But another thing that I'm seeing that you're learning right now, pal, too, is learning and knowing when you see red flags. <laughs> okay, I think you have a really strong intuition. I do, I can sense that for you. Your, your intuition is your compass in life. But it's been kind of like misdirected because again, I think you have the benefit of the doubt or you try to see the good in people, which is good, but it's kind of led you off the wrong path a lot of the time because there's like blatant red flags that you recognize in people, but you're like, oh, but they're so hot <laughs> or, like, or you're like, oh, they're so attractive or, oh, I don't want to be alone, right? And so you kind of allow these people to come into your life even though you know that they're not going to be respecting you or they don't have the same um, the same lifestyle as you or they don't want the same things as you or they make you feel like insecure or crazy or whatever, okay? Um, your red flag is that you're attracted to red flags and I can totally relate to that. So I think what you're learning is to not ignore your intuition, to not let pretty things or pretty people or what you see as desirable or visually pleasing to, you know, distract you from the core value of that thing or that person. Like you're not allowing the, the superficialness of people and situations and things to cause issues in your life. Um... Again, I, I really feel like you're someone that gets kind of swayed by romance and beauty and love. And that can be seen as your fault in life because you've let a lot of people take advantage of you, make you feel bad about yourself, or you attract people that just want to use you. And that is something that you are working on, okay? That's something that you are actually going to be overcoming. I'm hearing in April, wow. So I'm seeing that there's going to be a test. I'm hearing this. There's going to be a test that will be sent your way in the month of April whenever you guys watch this. So I don't know when April is going to be happening for you. It's going to be a test. And you are going to be overcoming that test. It's going to be testing your patience. It's going to be testing um, your self-esteem, your self-worth. And you are going to be making, again, a choice for you. And you're going to be overcoming that. Again, we all have free will, though. But I'm seeing that it will be smooth sailing after you make this choice for yourself regarding this test in April. This test could be a person. This test could be a repeated situation. Take what resonates. But that is what I'm channeling for you, Pile 2. But Pile 2, that is all that I have for you. 
I will see all you guys later and uh, toodaloo. Pile three, welcome to your pick a card reading about how you are becoming better, how you are improving, and how you are leveling up. So you did go ahead and choose the card that says Sun and Libra, Harmony number seven. <clears throat> and then the card that I used to accompany it was the Balance card. Sorry, you guys, I was losing my voice. Um... You went ahead and chose the balance card, which is temperance in tarot. So that's kind of going with the message that I was going to say for you is I feel like what I'm really channeling for you that you're really wanting to improve on is I'm hearing something about how you want a redo when it comes to your life, how you are being publicly recognized, as well as something that you see as your purpose or your identity. Um... I don't know why I'm feeling this for you. I don't know if you are older or if you're someone that has lived a very, not chaotic, but someone that has had a very full life. Like you've gone through a lot of experiences, maybe at a younger age, or maybe you just have learned a lot. I'm just kind of seeing this as you have gone through a lot in your life. There's been a lot of changes. There's been a lot of a uh, shakeups where there's been a lot of things that may have fallen out of your life or things that you've had to do to kind of get you to where you're at right now in this moment and what I'm seeing is your lessons and the things that you've gone through have put you into alignment with your purpose so if you are someone that feels like they haven't found their purpose you are going to be going on a journey of wanting to discover like what am I supposed to be doing it with my life I don't want to be fucking around anymore like I want to know, like, why am I here? Um, wow, you're you're really asking yourself the big questions, Pile 3. I'm really, really hearing that for you. And even with the card that has balance on here, um, there is an angel. This whole tarot deck is angels. But when you look at the Rider Way or even just any other tarot deck with the, the Temperance card, um, there's only a couple cards that have angels, which is the Lover's card as well as temperance and I'm pretty sure it's the strength card there I don't know if there's any other but those are the three cards that I can think of those are the only ones that have angels on it and when I see angels this usually makes me think of a I guess like a waking up moment also the judgment card has angels too and I'm kind of seeing that as a balance after judgment or this is like your temperance after your rebirth moment. I'm kind of seeing this as like a near-death experience or you had like this epiphany of like I need to change my life. I need to get my stuff together. Like it's making me think that you had a coming to Jesus moment in your life. Um, you're recognizing that there may be more to what you are used to or what you have been doing with your lifestyle, the people that you've been around. Like you're wanting more and you're wanting a sense of purpose. So what you're doing to improve yourself or your life or how you're becoming better is I think you may be going down this path of healing. I think you are longing for a sense of peace in your life because harmony is making me think of peace and balance and this sense of contentment. And maybe you've been living a life so far where maybe you haven't really felt that before. Um, I really want to keep hearing chaotic. So this could be like physically, it's been very chaotic for you. Maybe mentally and emotionally, you've never really felt a sense of peace. And I'm seeing that that's something that you're really wanting to change in your life is you want to feel happy. You want to feel content. You may be going down this road or this path in your life where you want to be able to forgive yourself for the mistakes that you may have made. Or maybe even you're going down this journey of forgiveness with people. Maybe you've been hurt really badly by your loved ones. But I'm seeing that you are striving for happiness, for peace, for a sense of I want a better future, but also... There's like the self-discovery mode that I'm really channeling from you too, where you're really trying to figure out like, what do you want? Like who you are? What is my purpose? Like, who am I as a person? Like, I, I feel like you're questioning like almost every little thing about you and your life and what has happened to you thus far. And why did this happen? Like, what am I supposed to be doing? So you're really wanting to find answers. You're really wanting clarity on your life. So what you're doing to help you lead down that path of getting the clarity that you're looking for is I think right now you're really focusing on just making choices that are healthy for you. Um, again, maybe really wanting to work on 
shadow work, maybe like working through your insecurities, but I'm seeing this as you're really wanting to find peace and balance and maybe even compromise in your life, um, having more moderation. So I'm getting that you may have been seen as someone that maybe had a lifestyle of, you know, why am I hearing over exaggeration? I don't really know why I'm channeling that. Um, you may be wanting to find a, a balance when it comes to impulse over impulse, maybe over, um, over indulging. There's something about how you may even be someone that has low dopamine, dopamine, or you need that sense of like a sugar craving, or maybe you have a sex addiction. I'm kind of getting like, for you to feel things, you overindulge in something. This could literally be anything. This could be like video games. This could be TV. This could be food addictions. This could be sex addictions. This could be drug addictions. Like I'm seeing this as overindulgence for you to feel alive. And I think you're recognizing that it's been like a crutch in your life. It's something that you're recognizing that's no longer bringing you that sense of, I guess, high or enjoyment that it used to. Um, I think you're really wanting to step away from like the physical desires and the 3D life and step more into like a spiritual, I don't know why I'm getting this, it's like a spiritual enlightenment or like a spiritual awakening that you're having in Pile 3 of trying to find the deeper meaning of why we're here and why you're here and like what are you supposed to be doing with your life. So how you're becoming better or how you're improving is you're really wanting to find the balance um, from what you were being seen as to what you want to be in your future. Um, you want to make healthier choices for yourself. You want to be seen as someone that is more peaceful, more balanced, someone that has their life together, someone that seems happy, maybe someone that seems healthier, or even someone that's coming off as, I know who I am. I know what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, there is a sense of fulfillment that comes through with finding your purpose and having this sense of like, this is why I'm here. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. And everyone's purposes are so different. And I really feel like when you find your purpose, that is something that is like a journey of self. Like you can't have someone or even a psychic tell you what you're supposed to be doing. That's something that you're supposed to kind of like discover through your own journey. And even the journey of finding that can be seen as fulfillment. And I think right now, I'm really channeling that you have been really distracted from your purpose or distracted, distracting yourself from finding your sense of ultimate fulfillment. Um, I'm really, I don't know why I'm hearing this for you. You felt uncomfortable with yourself for a really long time. I don't know why I'm really hearing that for you and I'm really sorry if this is triggering, but there's a sense of like, I'm, I'm really feeling from you that there's something about yourself that you don't like or there's something about you that you feel uncomfortable about. Um, you don't want to face something about you or your life and so you may tend to disassociate or you may try to numb the feelings or you distract yourself with what you're supposed to be doing in this life. Um, I'm hearing that you have a very straight to the point purpose, but you have been off track of that for a really long time. I am feeling that you have a really big purpose in this life when it comes to doing something that's impactful. And it may not be like as impactful as like, you know, you're traveling across the world and helping people and doing charity work. It could literally be anything, but there's something about how Whatever your purpose is, is going to be impacting you in a way where it's really going to be changing your mindset on a lot of things in your life. Um, and you have been distracting yourself from that for a really long time. And I don't really, it's going to be so different. I don't know why you're distracting yourself from it, but you have maybe just been distracted in general. Like your life has been feeling like it's been on autopilot, but it seems like what you're doing is you're realigning yourself back to who you're supposed to be. Um, wow. I, I'm hearing that you're also becoming a better person, like more of a good person. And again, everyone has good and bad. We're not just all good and all bad. But there's something about how you were kind of like focusing more on your shadow side. You're focusing more on your darker urges, your, you know, darker impulses. But there's something about how you're really tapping into more of your positive attributes, more of this hopefulness, more of this light that's in you. 
wow, I don't know, more encouragement is also what I'm hearing, but that's what I'm really channeling for you. So I really feel like the divine is really helping you right now. So what, how you're becoming better is I feel like you're finally receiving the divine guidance and you're listening to it. Um, I think you are someone that can really tap into your spiritual source. You're someone that can channel messages from God really easy. I'm really hearing that. So you may have psychic abilities or you may have a really strong intuition, Pile 3, but I think it's been blocked or clouded. You haven't been on the right path. You've been turning a blind eye to what you know what you should be doing, or maybe it's something that you didn't know, but you just haven't been on the right path. You've been around the wrong people. You've been around people that, yeah, I'm hearing people, people has been, people have been the thing that's been keeping you off track or they've been making it so that you have been ignoring your intuition or your judgment. You haven't been making the best choices because of other people's influence and whatever it is that you are doing to better yourself, you are allowing your intuition as well as again, divine guidance to help guide you to where you're supposed to be. So I feel like you're finally ready to hear this message. Um, you're finally ready to listen to your calling is what I'm hearing. You're ready to let God guide you down the path that you're supposed to be on. And I'm really feeling like, I'm hearing that you're ready to just kind of let things happen, even if it makes you look foolish. Wow. Wow, you guys. I just grabbed this deck and I'm talking. I looked underneath the deck and it says resisting change. I'm going to take this because it's going with the message. Ask yourself why you are not wanting to change. Look at the positive side to change it. So yeah, you are literally working on not resisting what is meant for you. Again, not resisting your destiny, not resisting your life purpose. Like, I feel like this is something that you have been struggling with where there's a repeated pattern in your life. Um, and it's like a, a wake up call, right? It's like a call from God, like saying, Hey, like you need to work on this or, Hey, you need to do this. And I don't know why I'm getting this <laughs> example. It's like Noah's Ark, right? God was telling Noah, like, Hey, we, you need to build an Ark because I'm going to flood the world. And he didn't want to listen to him, right? He didn't listen to God right away. He was like, no, that's crazy. Like, why should I do that? And then God just kept sending him signs, like sending animals to him kept trying to make things like basically happen where, you know, he was, <laughs> I'm thinking of like the, the movie, um, I think it was Evan Almighty. They was making fun of the Noah's Ark story where he kept waking up and like, he kept growing a really long beard and his hair was growing out and he kept trying to like cut his hair short to make it look like how he was. But it's like his body was changing. His, his world was changing no matter how many signs he tried to ignore of a change that was going to be coming. He kept trying to act like it didn't exist, but it came to the point where he couldn't ignore it anymore and it was straight in his face like, hey, like you need to do this. Like we're not going to let this go. Like this is something that you need to do, right? That's what I'm really channeling for you. So this could literally be like Maybe God's trying to warn you about a person. Maybe God is trying to warn you about your lifestyle. Maybe God is like, hey, like you need to make some changes in your life. And if you don't do it, we're going to basically force it upon you. Not to try to scare you or anything, but it's like time's up is what I'm hearing. Divine timing is here for something in your life. And this is going to be a really big change. And I'm hearing this is going to be a scary change for you, but this is something that's going to be bringing you to your utmost fulfillment. Um, it's going to be shaking the core of your identity. You are not going to be the same person as you were to how you are going to be seen maybe now or even in the future. You are making changes to the point where, again, you're going to be seen as foolish by other people. You may think that this is crazy, you may not believe in yourself. Um, again, another story that I'm getting from the Bible is Moses, right? So I'm, I'm getting like Noah's Ark. I'm getting Moses. I'm getting like these, these people that had these callings from God of doing the impossible uh, to make themselves look like a spectacle. But in the end, they were right. Everyone ridiculed them. Everyone was like, what are you talking about? But in the end, Moses and Noah were being led by God to make these really big changes and to do God's will. And they were right. 
So I feel like whatever this purpose is, is really big because it may even be seen as something that's very divinely guided, something that does not make sense to the human eye or to people's consciousness, but in divine timing, it will all make sense throughout time, through in the right time. Everything that you decided to do, everything that you decided to walk away from, everything that you decided to change will make sense over time. And you'll be like, wow, pile three made the right choice. That's what I'm really hearing for you. And I know I've been kind of going off, but I just, I feel like, I really feel called to tell you that if you have been feeling called to make very extreme life choices recently or even just the past couple of years and you don't even know why you did it but you just felt called to that was god leading you down the path of where you need to be it wasn't random your intuition was telling you that it was time to make changes and i i feel like that's what's happening for you right and i feel like whatever these changes are that you've maybe felt forced to make or felt like you didn't understand why it was happening it was for the future of how your your life is going to line up like maybe the people or the things that you were doing were not going to be matching who you are now again they wouldn't be bringing you a sense of peace they wouldn't be bringing you that sense of fulfillment and i really feel like you may have been looking like a fool there may have been a lot of people talking badly about you or making you feel crazier making you feel dumb for changing your life like i'm seeing that the people that you surround yourself with you are distancing yourself from them. I'm really getting that this is people. So this could be coworkers, this could be friends, this could be family, this could just be people in your community. You may be seen as the black sheep right now. And you are like trying to understand like, why is this happening to me? Like, why am I so alone in this? If this is what I'm supposed to be doing, why do I feel like I don't have anyone there to support me? And I think another message that wants to come through for you is you are being supported. You're being divinely guided and supported. You may not see your support, but I'm seeing there's a lot of things behind the scenes that, again, I really feel like there's a lot of things behind the scenes that you are not aware of. I'm hearing that God is around you all the time. And you may see a lot of signs of whatever you believe in God, angels, spirit guides around you through animals, symbolism, nature, numbers. I think they're wanting to lead you down the path where you're going to be the happiest, but this is like a part of purging right now. Wow. Okay, so <laughs> I really got into a, that channeled message. Let's just go ahead and keep pulling cards to see how are you bettering or improving your life right now. As I pulled a card for you, wow. I just looked underneath the deck and we got blessings and facing your fears. I, I feel like your spirit guides are straight to the point with these messages today how you are improving is you are facing your fears you are facing ridicule you are facing the unknown the uncertainty of are my choices the right choices but whatever it is that you are feeling called to change or do or whatever improve on in your life is going to be leading you down a path where there's blessings like a better life for you you are literally walking away from things that you feel in your heart no longer is serving you or connecting to you. And you're literally finding it, right? You're on a road of self-discovery right now that's going to be leading you to where you need to be. Your sense of fulfillment, your sense of uh, purpose, but also a blessed life where you're going to be feeling very loved, supported, and taken care of by the universe. I'm also hearing, yeah, as I said that, accepting help. I feel like right now you're on this path of you feeling very alone. What your spirit guides want you to know is they're sending help to you right now. As you're watching this video, help is on its way to you. I just want to let you know that. But you don't know it, right? There's a lot of things that are being kept hidden from you, blocked off, closed off. There's a lot of things that your spirit guides are working on behind the scenes for you that you're not aware of. Um, and the reason why they're kind of making it so that you're at the standstill where you're like, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I've done everything that I can to change my environment, change my perspective. They want you to actually take this moment to relax right now, 
to sit in this waiting period because I feel like you are in a waiting period right now. You've done everything that you need to do. You've already made the changes that you can physically right now. And right now you're in this purgatory mode because you're building up your strength for what's to come. So you may have been in this period of your life of standstill, of nothing's happening. So these changes that I feel like you, you know, you're making, the, the lifestyle changes, what's improving, I feel like you've already made a lot of it. I'm hearing that you've been working really hard and silent. So physically, a lot of things may not have been changing, but I think you as a person have, right? This person in this card is just kind of sitting there relaxing, but it's almost like you're, you're recognizing the birds that are flying away. It's like you are not moving, but you're recognizing everything else is alive and moving around you. It's like you've been waiting for guidance. I think you've made all the changes that you need to make. God may have been taking you away from a job that you had. Maybe you lost a job. Maybe you've been waiting for um, guidance on what to do when it comes to your next step, right? Because I'm seeing this as like things were taken away. You were in a purging period, but now you're like in this rest period and you're kind of just working on yourself and you're like waiting for the next thing to come in. And the reason why you have been in this period of rest is for you to build up strength, for you to build up stamina and again, self-discovery for you to kind of find like, who am I? Like this has been kind of a journey of you learning who you are and healing and just again, purging what needs to be purged anything else that's left that needs to be let go anything that you've been resisting needs to be acknowledged healed and let go because what's about to come again i'm seeing this coming to you your spirit guides god whatever you believe in is going to be sending in help sending in a mentor or sending in some sort of gift right i'm seeing that you are about to start going down the path of no more resistance like things are going to start flowing in for you and it's because of all the self-work that you've been working on now i want to see how you've been working on yourself right what is this self-work that you've been doing we got the 10th house here sun wow you have the sun in libra do you see that sun in the 10th house how people perceive you but again the 10th house is making me think of your purpose what you want to be known for. How are people going to know your legacy? This is all about like, what do you want to show in the world? So what you have been working on pile three is what do you want to be known for? What do you want to leave behind when you're dead and gone? Like, how do you want to be remembered? That's what I'm really channeling for you. Like, how do you want to be remembered? And I think you've been looking at yourself in the past. You're like, I don't want to be remembered for being this way. I don't want to be remembered for this is what I was known for, that this was my reputation. So you've been really healing your ego. That's really something that I'm seeing is you have been wanting to heal your ego. Again, you've been really wanting to heal an old version of yourself. You've been really wanting to change your identity to fit what feels like you. Um, not because of other people and you've been really trying to find your sense of purpose so what you've been working and improving on is finding your purpose knowing who you are maybe healing an old version of you not being recognized or not leaving behind baggage or a toxic version of you and again we all have toxicity I felt like I used to be a red flag and that I had a lot of toxic traits I still do too, but I've been really trying to work on myself these past couple of years because I didn't like who I was. I didn't like that I wasn't the best person. I didn't like that I may have not been a great friend. I didn't like that I had toxic red flag traits about me. And I wanted to, I decided that I wanted to change that. I didn't have to keep living a life that made me feel icky inside, right? And that's the same thing that I'm getting for you is you're choosing to become better. You're choosing to really look within and be like, I need to work on myself. Like, I, whatever I'm doing, this path, like, I'm seeing this as you walking down a path and, like, throwing things. Like, you're in a car. I don't know why I'm getting so many examples. You're in a car and you're throwing trash out the window and then other people are seeing you discard your trash. Like, I'm seeing that people have publicly been watching you in the past and, you know, 
characterizing you or making fun of your character. Like it wasn't the best. I'm getting that your reputation wasn't the best. And I think you're recognizing like, okay, like, yeah, my reputation has been messy. It hasn't been the best. I haven't been the best person. Um, I've hurt people. Like, I don't want to be known for that. And so you're wanting to become a better person. And for you to become a better person is to look at your faults, look at your flaws and forgive yourself for them but also become self-aware enough that you are wanting to work on it so that you don't keep doing that to other people, yourself, and feeling bad about it. So yeah, this is all about you healing your ego, right? And also what you want to leave behind when you're gone. All right, so pile three, I want to go ahead and end your guys' reading off with two more cards here to see how are you improving and becoming better. And I do feel like... Forgiving self. Wow. As I said that, let me go ahead and pull another card. So again, this is all about self-forgiveness and uh, healing and learning, but I am seeing that there's a lot of blessings coming your way. So I feel like I want to clarify on what the blessing is that will be coming in for you. So I feel like it's going to be coming in soon. All right, listen. All right, so what you are learning to do listening to your intuition be alert the soft chiming bells call to nearby fairies again you're paying attention to the signs you're paying attention to messages from god what your intuition is telling you but you're also forgiving yourself again accepting what has happened and give yourself grace to make mistakes but also acknowledging that you've made mistakes and trying to become a better person because of it realizing that you know, I, yes, I made these decisions and yes, I made these mistakes, but I'm going to work and continually work on myself so that I don't keep doing that, right? You are going to be reaching a lot of success. I'm just, I'm seeing this for you. There's so many signs here of blessings, success, being divinely guided. You are going to be, there's something really big that's meant for you. I just, I see that. Your intuition, if you allow God to lead you where you need to be, if you can allow yourself to forgive you, other people, as well as your past self, and keep continuing to become the best you possible, even though it doesn't make sense to you at the time, or other people don't understand why you're doing certain things. I feel like if you just keep going, there's something of like a victory or fulfillment or success for you. I really want to see what this blessing is because there's a blessing. Um, again, looking at the bigger picture, there's more to life than what you are seeing it as right now. What is this blessing? Take inspired action. Your blessing is your inspiration. Your blessing, I'm hearing that your blessing is your, it's this need of wanting to change your life. I feel like the reason why your life is changing or becoming better is because of you. It's like, again, I feel like you woke up to something. You waking up to what life actually is, you waking up to who you are supposed to be is going to be seen as a blessing all on its own. But again, your blessing is happiness. Your blessing is happiness, fulfillment, wellness, and feeling just good. Feeling good, feeling lively, feeling like you are happy, feeling like you're taken care of in life. Again, there's going to be so many different things. But feeling good about yourself, your surroundings, and no longer feeling like icky or feeling sad or feeling bad or feeling negative. This is all about light and positivity. So think about what would make you happy. Or maybe you don't even know what happiness is, but I'm just, I'm seeing that this is going to be leading you down a path of happiness, right? I'm also seeing that another thing that you're going to be expecting is conclusions, results, no more waiting. You're going to be getting answers to why things are the way they are, but also it's going to be feeling very stable, like stability, groundedness, secureness. That is something that's going to be coming into your life as well. To end your reading off, let's see when this will be happening. Let's see what time of the year this blessing is going to be coming. And this may not happen this year. Again, time is kind of, I don't know, it's weird like that when it comes to spirit, but let's see. Gemini. So it could be this Gemini season next year. Again, it, it could be, I don't know, time is not relevant when we ask God, but Gemini season is around May, June. So whatever May, June time frame God believes that it's divine timing for, that's the time of the year where blessings are going to start coming in for you. But pile three, that's all that I have for you. 
I really hope that you enjoyed this reading and I will see all of you in the next one. Bye.